Hey, welcome back to another episode of You Love Comic Books. This is episode 101 of a YouTube show where I showcase my recent comic book hauls, comic speculations, and stuff from my collection. So this is part two of my convention haul. If you watched my hunt, big, giant size 100th episode, you would have saw the long box that I got for just 50 bucks with some insane finds in there. You will see a link at the end of this video. You can go to it or just follow this channel. Hit that subscribe button. Become part of the You Love Comic Books conversation. Help get to a thousand subscribers before the end of the year of you know 2023. Hit that like button. That helps assure more people watch this video. If you like these type of videos, I would appreciate it. Also, if you have any questions of anything you see in this video, please leave a comment. Have a, if you have any questions, leave a, you know, leave it in the comment section and I will respond accordingly. Okay, let's get into this. Let's start with some uh, weekly pull list, Transformers number two. Pretty good so far. I don't know if I'm going to keep reading it, but I like it. Star Wars number 40. I got the Life Day variant. They didn't have the regular and uh, I just went with this one. I thought it was, it's kind of funny. It's, uh, I'm glad that they, Marvel, Disney acknowledges the Star Wars Christmas special, which if anyone, if any of you have ever seen it, the Star Wars Christmas slash holiday special is possibly, um, it's, it's pretty bad. <laughs> then Darth Vader number 40, this is a, uh, connecting variant, uh, pretty cool. I like the story so far, uh. I had, if you're following the Dark Droids comic series or uh, event going throughout Star Wars, this is probably the, to me, I think so far, the best event they've done. So, really like it. All right, here's, uh, now I did say I was going to talk about this is being part two of the convention hall, but I'm going to show you some books I got from a store first. Uh, some really good finds, I think, uh, for like super cheap. So this was like $1.99, Itchy and Scratchy Comics, Holiday Hijinks, Special Number One. Really happy to get that. Really nice condition. I've been trying to get these books. The first issue, go. there's like, I think it's six issues, Radioactive Man. The first one can go for a pretty penny, like anywhere from 50 to 100 bucks, depending on the condition. But there were six issues. It's kind of funny how this says issue 216. It's kind of like a, a joke, like, I don't know what issue two actually is, or three. I don't even know. I think this might be the fifth issue of the series. I'm not sure, but happy to grab that. I think it was only like $1.99 or $2.99, so, and it's in really nice condition. Been wanting to get this one for a while. Happy to get this for $1.99. This is the variant cover, which is still pretty cool. It is the first, um, I don't know if it's considered the first full appearance of Crush, Lobo's Daughter. But I did go back to the store a couple days later, and I was glad that to find, because I looked it up and I realized, oh, there was a Teen Titans special, and that she appears in this comic, actually, first. Teen Titans special number one, also got that one for $1.99. First appearance of Crush, Lobo's daughter. Now, there is a, uh, <laughs> I guess they consider it canon. Lobo has a daughter in the original Lobo ser ongoing series that was in during the 90s. And that last, it's like issue 57 or something. It's one of the last issues in the series. It actually goes for a lot. So I'll keep my eye out for that one. But I guess as like actual, like, t you know, DC canon, this is the real first appearances of Crush. This was $7.99. I, you know what? I couldn't pass it up. It was in really nice condition. I already have this already, but... I love this cover. She-Hulk number two. I think it, like, it, it's such a great cover, especially for a second issue. Uh, second appearance of She-Hulk. So happy to grab that. This was $2.99. I thought that was a really good deal. In a newsstand. This is probably the... I have a couple of copies of this, but this is probably the best condition copy I have of this. And Uncanny X-Men 184. This is the first appearance of Forge. So... Classic X-Men number one. They had this for four ninety nine. I thought that was in, uh, it's in nice condition. Anytime I see this book, I'm going to grab it. It basically reprints like part of Giant Size X-Men number one. And then there's a bunch of new content in there. And it has a super iconic cover from Arthur Adams. One of the best X-Men covers actually out there. So happy to grab that. Uh, so this is from the convention. 
So like I said, this is considered part two of my convention uh, that I went to recently. There's this one booth I like to go to and uh, I try to go there all the time. I get really good deals. I find interesting books there. Uh, nothing too insane this time. Last time I got some amazing books from him. So I always try to hit him up. He had a 50 cent bin. So picked up Figment number four in really nice condition. Red Sonia number two. Uh, so that's cool. All right. Thundercats number two. This is, uh, I don't know what storyline this is. I think I have the first issue of this, so I figured why not grab it. And then Xenit Warrior Princess number two uh, with the photo covers. I always try getting these photo covers. It's in decent condition. It was only, he gave me like a deal in the end, even though these were 50 cents. All right, so then he had a $2 bin, and I went through those. So <laughs> these are ridiculous. Uh, Archie 616 and 617. The, uh, this is the campaign. Uh, Obama and Sarah Palin visiting Riverdale. And I guess they got into a boxing match. <laughs> this is so stupid. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Happy to grab those, I guess. I uh, got this... Uh, then I picked up Sports Superstar, Mike Tyson. I think like these books are always underrated. I'm glad to get this. I'm happy to have this in my collection. So, Daredevil 172. I figured it was in the $2 bin. This is, uh, it's like a nice mid-grade copy. It has a couple of spine ticks, but these books can, is that? No. I got accept, wanted to make sure it wasn't a Mark Jewell's variant. Uh, I figured why not grab it? It is part of the Frank Miller. It's an early lecture appearance. I thought this was interesting. I didn't really know much about it, but I was like, I'm going to grab it. Frank Frazetta, number one from DC Comics, Shining Knight. Couldn't pass this one up. Conan King 37. Lit, just buying this because it's a 25th anniversary border. It's in really nice condition. And again, it's in the $2 bin. Holly Quinn, number 12, with uh, her hanging out with uh, Power Girl, drawn by Amanda Connor. I don't know if she does the interior. I have to look at it. But she did the cover. I grabbed this one too. Secret Origins starring the Golden Age Hawkman and Pow Girl. Pretty cool. All right. Spider-Man Classics number one. I remember this series around this time. I figured, why not? It's a number one. I feel like it's a forgotten series. It was kind of like... It was like a... It was supposed to be like in between the pages or whatever type stories during the early period of Spider-Man. So it was like, it's new content, but like it's not reprints, but this is kind of cool. Marvel 2-in-1, Thing, and the Macabre Man-Thing, As I Lay Me Down to Die, plus Ben Grimm fighting side-by-side -side with Sergeant Fury and his Helen Commandos, all in this World War II tale. I thought that was pretty cool. It's in really nice condition, so happy to grab that. Uh, and then this is the last one I grabbed. It's in really nice condition. It has one major flaw, which stinks. This rip here, where the Z it's issue 110 of Justice League. It's got this rip here, but I figured it was only two bucks. Still has value. It still looks great. Like, this would have definitely been, like, in the VF easily if it wasn't for that. Even if it just had a little tear. Uh, but this is uh, the key significance of this. This is the second appearance of John Stewart Green Lantern, and it's also when he first joins the team. So this is a good key to have. You can find it uh, out in the wild for a pretty good price. I actually, in my one of my previous videos from a couple months ago, I found this and got a good deal on it. That one's in really nice condition, and it's complete. But I was like, I'm not going to pass this up. So he gave me, like, he gave me, let me see if I can find it. Huh? Hold on. <laughs> Where are you? So he gave me like this full stack here. He did 20 on that. And I think that was a really good deal in the end of the day. So happy to grab those. And then I went back to him later. And I'm glad I grabbed this. I picked it up. He It was only two bucks. Spider Woman number one. So that's a good one to get. Uh, they just released the trailer for Madam Web. And Cindy Sweeney, I think that's her name. Um, some of you may know who that is. If you don't know who it is, feel free to look her up. Uh, she's playing Julia Carpenter 
in the in the movie. So I have a feeling her first appearance and this comic are gonna they're gonna have a little bit of a spike. So happy to grab that. Okay, this is from another. Let me. Oh, I'm my bad. There were two more books in this. <laughs> Daredevil fifty five. This is a uh, just a cool cover appearance of Echo. It's not a first appearance or anything like that. That's like issue nine. Happy to grab that. And then grab this one too. This one's an interesting book. This is like, I don't know if it's like the first gender swap of these characters, but I remember seeing this cover and I always think it was kind of funny. Like w Wonder Warrior or something. It's like the worst designed outfit. It's so lazy. <laughs> The male versions. The Supergirl just looks like it doesn't look as bad in the comic, but here it just looks like you know they just have a guy wearing the Supergirl outfit, and obviously they just have literally a woman wearing the Superman outfit. So still pretty cool. It's a cool Mister Mitzelplick ad, not an ad. I'm sorry, story. So that was part of that twenty. So hey, even better. Okay, whoops. Do me a favor, this video is going to be over soon. It's going to be a quick one compared to my last giant size episode. Please check that out. Do me a favor, hit that like button. Do uh, you have any questions you see so far? Leave a comment. And if you like these type of videos, hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell. Become a part of the You Love Comic Books conversation. Help me get to 1,000 followers before the end of 2023. This was another booth. I got these for all for 10 bucks. Wolverine Battles, The Incredible Hulk. Cool reprint, I remember, from the 90s of uh, basically Hulk 180, 181. Probably like the whatever pages from 182. So happy to get that. This is great. I love this cover. This is my second copy of this. Uh, it's a better, it's an improvement. The one I got, like, it's not, I don't know, it got beat up a little bit or something. <laughs> uh, X-Men 13 variant edition, Arthur Adams doing uh, a Dark Phoenix. Very nice. Uh, New Mutants 94. I meant, I kind of screwed up buying these. Not a big deal because I didn't really pay a lot for these books, but I did, I wanted to get this one. And I did get this one as well. I my this was at the end of convention. My brain was already fried. I thought ninety three is the first time Wolverine fights Cable. It's fine. I already have a couple of those. I feel like uh, I think Cable is supposed to be returning in Deadpool as well with Wolverine in it. So I wouldn't shock me if these books get a little spike. The early uh, Wolverine team up with. Um, Cable and New Mutants. And then this is the last one I got at the table. This is like a nice mid-grade copy, maybe a little better. G.I. Joe Transformers, number one in a newsstand. Uh, they <laughs> we'll see what happens. They announced a Transformers G.I. Joe, like they, if you, spoilers for the new Transformers movie. They alluded in the end that G.I. Joe exists in this Transformers universe in the last Transformers movie. And, uh, you know, the guy in the movie, yeah, spoilers, guy gets recruited by G.I. Joe. It's an awesome stinger. Problem is, the movie didn't do that great. So, I don't know if, like, I mean, I think if Hasbro made a G.I. Joe Transformers movie, people would go see it. So, I don't know. We'll see. I'm happy to get this. And I always loved this cover. I remember as a kid, like, oh, man, look what they did to Bumblebee. All right, last books. These ones are pretty good. There's a really good one in the end. I paid 13 for all these books. Yeah. Mortal Kombat number one tournament edition. Anytime I see a video game book for super cheap and it's a number one and it's in really nice condition, I'm going to grab it. Grab this one too. Cowboys. i never seen this one. I've run into the, the second series issue number one a couple of times, but this is the first time I ran into the first series. So Cowboys and Moo Mesa. Number one of a three-issue miniseries. Happy to get that. I have the embossed cover, but I could not pass up the regular cover of Spider-Man Adventures number one, especially for only two bucks. This was uh, just really nice looking. Good. It, it, I love the yellow background. The other one is a white cover, and he's embossed. So it's cool. It's like two totally different... Uh, same art, but two totally different outcomes. So really happy with this. This is a great, just an iconic cover. It's in decent condition. It has a few spine sticks, but for two bucks, couldn't complain. Terminator, number one. I think it has a date stamp there too. I don't know. 
Again, great. I don't know who the artist on here is. If anybody knows who did this, but I remember seeing this as a kid in the store, like a couple of years after Terminator came out. And I was just the first Terminator. I I was blown away by this. Like it, it to me, like the airbrushed art, the ripped skin. Like it's not even that accurate to the movie when you look at it. Like it's like it's not really even Terminator. They don't even look like this. But it doesn't matter. It's so cool looking. So happy to get that. And then this is the best bet. This is the best get. Now it has a little bit of sun damage on the bottom. And on the back, it has like a weird. Uh, sun damage too. See that tanning? But like overall, it's still like, I mean, if this was like pressed, this would still be like an, a real, I don't know what, what tanning would take off. I have no idea. You know that answer. I'm not going to get it graded. I'm just happy to get this. I wanted to get this book, but I'm not going to run at this book on average can go for like 50 bucks easily. This is the first appearance of Kilowog. I think it's a couple of the first appearances. This is a big issue. This is probably the biggest Green Lantern issue from the 80s. Like I said, this book can go for 50 bucks easily. I don't know what it would go for in this condition. Like I said, it has some slight tanning here and there, but in the top, you guys know the answer to that. But again, just for five bucks, I could not pass that up. Again, I'm not gonna, I would never pay that it's not a, like it's a want book. I'd pay maybe 20. If I started for 20 bucks, I would get it. But I, I, I pay five, even better. So yeah, so on top of the, like I said, if you watched that last video, I think that was a great convention. Found lots of really good books. Happy to find this. It was definitely on my want list. Uh, So yeah, I think uh, issue, you know, being this is episode 101, I think we're on to a good start for the next 100 episodes. Now do me a favor, again, if you like these type of videos, smash that bell, become a subscriber, become, start, become a part of the You Love Comic Books conversation. Get me to 1,000 subscribers before the end of 2023. You're going to hit that like button, leave a comment. Okay, you're going to see a previous video over here, here, a previous video over there. You're going to smash that subscribe button. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Bye-bye.